curious, how do you see this group or this time in professional golf? Brandon? Well, whether or not you like parody at the top or a dominant player, uh, either give you great stories. It's like asking you whether you like a filet or lobster or champagne or Chateau Lafitte. I mean, either way, you're going to go pretty darn good. Uh, on the one hand, you like to see rivalries. You like to see players going head to head. But that's more the norm. If you think about it, we go back historically speaking from 86 to 90. Seve Ballesteros, Greg Norman, 10 different times they changed number one. 91 to 99, nine different players ascended to number one. From 2015 to 2023, nine different players have ascended to number one. In the middle there is where you have the difference. 1999 to 2004, he dropped anchor. Over 330 weeks, Tiger Woods. He did the same from 2005 to 2010. I want to give you a look, though, of what it would look like. Just imagine Tiger didn't exist in 2001. Well, he's going to be at the top of the list, so you can't imagine. But look at the lead that he had over Ernie Els, 17.35 points over Ernie Els by a wide margin more points than Ernie Els had accumulated over a couple of years. But separating second, third, and fourth was eight-tenths of a point. So imagine Tiger Woods didn't come along, Ernie, Phil, David Duvall, who were always going to be gods in the game of golf, would have been vying for number one in the world. And you thought, man, we are lucky to have three stars like that. And if you compare that to today, you've got very much the same thing without a dominant player. What separates Rom, Scheffler, and McElroy, five tenths of a stroke or, or a point, separate these three players and, and really what made Tiger Tiger and what has kept John Rom, Scotty Scheffler and Rory McIlroy from really separating themselves is because Tiger had everything. He had the driver, he had the irons, he had the wedges, he had the putter, he had the step on your neck determination and the never sated hunger. How often does that come along in golf? It comes along once every 50 years or 40 years or something like that. So sit back and enjoy this settle in because that's what we're going to have until and who is the most likely person to separate themselves? You know, to me, it's probably Rory. Yeah, but, you know, what will happen, Brendel, is they'll separate and then they'll come back. The other guys will go. That's what we've seen. And, and you know, I don't think between them, there's such quality players, all three of them, but there's not one that is, is going to separate himself and go off into the distance and stay there, you know, for a, a long period of time. I think the quality of all three um, and the fact that they've got such strong games and big motivations. The big thing is motivation, remember. Let's not forget that. Um, so, you know, obviously Rory's got a bigger body of work because he's older and he's been on tour a bit longer. Um, but there's nothing between them. And the determining factor at this moment in time, and you'd have to say that Ram is the one with the momentum at the moment, and Ram is the one that you would think that is the hottest player at the moment. And the determining factor is in, in that is Scotty and... While Scotty and, um, and Rory have come off the boil in terms of putting, uh, he's accelerated. This time last year, we were sitting down talking about John Ram and, and going into the Masters. We were saying, you know, John Ram is playing so well tee to green, but he's putting awful, and we could never really see him winning a tournament. Now he's turned that around, and when the putting came back, we've seen him uh, escalate to the heights that he's in now. But there's nothing between these guys, and it's just one move forward, the other moves back, the other one moves forward. They're such quality players, and if the remote re motivation remains high, that's going to continue for a while, because the quality of their games is also similar. Brandel, do you think uh, these designated events with the smaller fields and, and hopefully into the, the majors will produce uh, Jokovic, Nadal, Federer-like rivalries on a consistent basis where we see these guys on Sunday afternoon, 71st hole, getting after it against one another? Jokovic, Nadal, Federer was three dominant players. Obviously, in tennis, where players tend to dominate, you, you, you have that you know, you're pitting your strengths against another player's weakness. So that, that lends itself to dominance that you see in tennis. And they were lucky. I mean, that triumphant was incredible. I don't think tennis will ever see that again. I'm certainly no expert in tennis. I'll, I'll text Pam Shriver at the end of this show. Uh -huh. She's a friend. I'll say, will we ever see it? I bet she says no. Uh, but in golf, you know, we've had triumphants of dominant players. Sneed, Hogan, Nelson, uh, Varden, uh, Ray, uh, you know, I mean, we, we had a, a wonderful dominance of Nick, Gary, or excuse me, Tiger, Gary, uh, and, uh, excuse me, let me go back, Jack, Gary, and Orny. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it, it, from time to time you'll get that. But I don't think we're going to get a dominant player in this particular era because a player has to come along that has it all. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, look, if you look at what Rory did last year, uh, he was more dominant than any other player from a strokes gains perspective besides Tiger, from a scoring average perspective, besides Tiger. But he wasn't a shot and a half better than everybody else, the way Tiger Woods was. So the next dominant player, we don't know his name. He's in high school. Uh, you know, he, he's in college somewhere. 
But we, we just, we haven't seen him yet on the stage in golf. I don't know if we'll see it again, Brandel. I, I think when Tiger came on the scene, um, there was a number of areas and gaps that he was ahead of the game on that have been closed now. So I'm talking about on the cutting edge of technology. You know, he was using tech, he knew exactly what, he used the, the Nike, the whole Nike uh, team behind him to create equipment that was specifically useful for him that other guys really weren't on. I think he was moving in a fitness level um, uh, in a, into a different place that the other players went on. So there was a gap there that he was able to move into. Um, his short game uh, was on a level that we hadn't seen before. In terms of hitting the ball and understanding the importance of power in the modern game and the golf ball that you needed to use to, to do that, I think he was moving in that direction. So I think he moved into gaps that were there. I don't see those gaps anymore. The sports science involved at the top <laughs> levels of professional golf, is, 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 it, everybody has moved to that level now. So I don't see the gaps. So I don't know if somebody can come and create that distance from the rest and of the guys. Brandon, Someone will come along eventually and do it completely different than everybody else. You know, I mean, I think early on, Tiger was dominant, even though he was using a 43 and a half inch steel shafted driver. Can you see somebody coming ahead and, and, and dominating the way you just explained there with Tiger with the world rankings to be that far ahead oh, of Oh, no, I don't else? think we'll ever see Tiger Woods again. And I've said it a million times. I don't think we'll ever see <laughs> Shakespeare again. But, you know, somebody will come along like, uh, you know, like a Phil Mickelson. And, you know, look, if Tiger hadn't come along, Phil Mickelson would have, I think, edged out and been a, a, what we would call a, a dominant player, the same way we call Greg Norman a dominant player, the same way we call Tom Watson yeah. a dominant player. But none of them dominated like Tiger Woods. Yeah. Well, the gap you talked about, I thought was up here for yeah, Tiger Woods. I, I'm, I I'm thinking about if, if prime Tiger was yeah. in that was in that field last week yeah. at Bay Hill. Do you think he would have allowed Kurt Kitayama, with all due respect, gutsy player, yeah. to have made a triple bogey and beat him on Sunday? Look, look we, we, I, I did a deep dive with Mark Brody. It's going to be later in the show. And I appreciate that the, 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 the determining factor was between the years. But it was also represented in the statistics. I mean, you look at the statistics and you didn't even know who Tiger Woods was, the statistics would show you that Tiger Woods was going to be, I get that between the years was a large part of the puzzle. But that, but that, that re reflects itself in but putting, we, we and not missing putts that we, matter. We confer a lot of attributes on people based upon accomplishment. The statistics but, are but, off the charts with Tiger need, Woods. But, but you of, need it here of to, course. to translate statistically fair putting green. That's right. That's, it's that's, all about focus, especially focus on the backside. That, that's, a, that's a fair point. But what Tiger did off of the tee with his golf swing and what he did into the green with his yeah. golf swing and also yeah. with his, I think, his conservative approach and ability to work the ball. Right now, all yeah, of these all. players are being taught not to work the golf ball. They're being taught that one shape is, is all you need. Meanwhile, the greatest player of all time had all nine different shapes. So they're all being taught just one shape, and they're all being taught to play with golf one particular way. And so to your point, if they're all being taught the same thing, will they not all play the same way? Someone will come along that will swing differently, think differently, and there'll be a seismic shift in the game, and everybody will try to copy well, him. My point is, is there a gap that they can move into? Because I, I think sports science is right on the edge including psychologists mm -hmm. and, and the importance of psychologists in the game now. Right. Back in the day, nobody used psychologists. Now everybody's using them, and, and everybody understands what you need to do to enter peak performance. I think there is a gap, and it's 54-hole leads, uh, and how you are the same person on Sunday that you were in developing that league.